Hey, what's up guys? I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about what if Julius Randle signs with the Philadelphia 76ers and this is an actual possible scenario to happen as he is a free agent this year and the Philadelphia 76ers are most likely going to be in the market for some more young talent or like, you know, they're probably not going to be in the trade market because they don't have much to trade. They have a lot of young assets, but those young assets are like a big part of their future so they're not going to be trading much and they don't, I mean, they have a little bit of cap space but they're most likely going to be signing these kind of cheaper players. Julius Randle was a great player that you could definitely get for cheap and he even would be able to fill in the gap at power forward yes Sorge is a decent player but he's not a great player so i'm gonna be getting into why the philly 76ers could and should sign julius randall so without further ado with that merriment on too much let's get right into this video all right so first thing first let's just get into what the philadelphia 76ers currently have right now they have dario Sarge at power forward and i mean he's a pretty good player pretty decent but he's not great as he's averaging 14.6 points per game 6.7 rebounds per game and 2.6 assists per game but I mean, his biggest weakness is his lack of rebounding as he is a power forward averaging 6.7 rebounds per game. And that is decent, but I mean, he is ranked 30th in the league among all power forwards or forwards in general in the entire league, while Julius Randle is ranked 10th in the league in rebounds per game among all the forwards. So Julius Randle has them in rebounding by a lot, but I mean, that's pretty much his only weakness. He can score pretty good. He can, he's just a like Julius Randle is just a little bit better than him. So I don't think they should get rid of Sorich, but I do think they should sign him only because i mean his rebounding is better and he's like more of a solidifier at power forward so that was my that's pretty much what they have right now so my first reason is going to be that randall julius randall's ceiling is much higher than dario sarge's as they are both the same age at 23 years old but i mean you would think their their ceiling should be the same as they are the same age but no i mean like sarge's last year's stats are pretty much the identical to this year's stats so really like he didn't have much of a change and he's pretty much already at his ceiling and at his peak of where he is going to be but when you look at Julius Randle his stats have improved pretty pretty good at over all of his years as he is averaging three more points per game than he was last year and th that has increased every single year so you can only expect him to keep on increasing his points per game he's averaging two less minutes per game but he's right now averaging one more rebound per game than he was and one more offensive rebound per game all while averaging two less minutes per game and then also to make it better he's averaging those better stats while averaging three less minutes per game than Dario Sorich is per game so I mean you kind of look at it that his ceiling is a little bit better as his stats are, are improving but not even just that just look at his last few games and at the end of the season where Randall started to actually get real minutes as he was averaging over 30 minutes per game this dude was averaging 20 points per game 3.3 assists per game and 9.3 runs per game all while doing at a 56% shooting that is unbelievable he shot 56% from the field while averaging 20 points per game and almost averaging a double double with 9 points three rebounds per game that is extremely good and he started doing that consistently once he was consistently getting at least the 29 to 30 minutes per game he started doing that very consistently so if a team is willing to give him those kind of minutes then i have no doubt that he will be able to do that and i mean that just shows you how high julius randall's ceiling is compared to dario sorge's as he never he never really had that much of a scoring impact or he's never like that explosive player that julius randall could be which kind of segues into my next region which is Rand randall is a much better score as um Dario Sorge does average 14 points per game which is pretty good from power forward but Julius Randle averages 16 points per game and also Julius Randle has 25 plus games where he has scored over 20 points per game while Dario Sarge only has 19 and then also Randle shoots at a higher efficiency than Sarge as he shoots 10 percent better than Sarge from the field and Sarge takes less shots per game than Randle which means he shoots at a much much better percentage than what Sarge does and I mean that is a big impact if you can score that much more efficiently score more points per game and just be a, be able to be more of a high volume score averaging that 20 points per game which can be a game changer in a season changer because just think they could have been ranked maybe number one in their conference instead of number two or three which i think they were ranked three or four i'm not sure what they were ranked but they could have been ranked much higher if they would have had that impact of scoring that randall has instead of just having dario Sorge. but now that i got into all the reasons why i think randall is a better player than Sarge and Sarge is a great player but Randall I think is a little bit better than him let's get into why the 76ers would want him not just because because not always do you want the better player and you might not be able to fit in your system but I think Julius Randall would fit in the system as he would improve their defense although their defense is pretty good ranked 11th in the league which is almost a top 10 defense in the league so they are very very good but if you just watch Julius Randall in Darius Arch play Julius Randall 
just plays with that emotion, that energy, kind of like, you know, like Dennis Rodman, not as good as Dennis Rodman, no he's near, but he's kind of that trash man, get the rebounds, do the hustle plays, pretty much like, I hate to say, like that thug you need, like, you know what I mean, like, dude, that's not afraid of anything, he doesn't, he, like, he's good at scoring, but, like, that's not his first priority, his first priority is to grab rebounds, get his team out on the fast, break. like, he's just a like, very, very good all-around power forward, he doesn't do one thing very, very well, but he does a lot of things all right, so like he's just a very good hustle player, and that's pretty much what they need. As besides Joel and B, they don't really have that hype man that really wants to get the rebounds. Now, if you were able to add someone like Julius Randle, now you have one of the best front courts in the entire NBA to go along with two very high energetic, high like octane players. And it would be very, very hard to compete and guard that front court while also having to look at their backcourt of Ben Simmons and whoever and JJ Reddick. I mean, that would be an almost unguardable team, but then also. So it would add the, so much depth to their team as just that one player would add like make them to have a almost Toronto like bench as Toronto has the best bench in the NBA they would have a bench that would compete with Toronto Raptors as right now Ilya Silva is the backup point guard who is very very solid he's a 10 plus point per game score but just think now he'll be your third option from that power forward position as just look at what they would have on their bench Markel Fultz the number one overall pick of last year's draft coming off the bench at point guard tj mcconnell who is a good backup shooting guard who is averaging over 10 points per game a veteran scorer in bellinelli at the small forward who can, he came up huge in the playoffs and showed that he is a great could be a great leader for this young philadelphia team and then you have Darius sorich off the bench who is currently their starter who is playing out pretty good like he, if he came off your bench that would be huge and then you have rashawn holmes at center who is a also very solid player off the bench especially backing up joel Embiid, where he wouldn't have to get that that many minutes so their bench would pretty much be a starting lineup but off the bench like that is a huge thing for a team especially for how young they are you can arrest Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid and if you got Julius Randle they would all be very young that team would be extremely extremely young and usually young players don't have huge egos where it's hard to kind of jail so if they add Julius Randle this offseason where they're all very very young still there won't be any big egos and he'll be able to jail very very well with this team I really think this would happen and the reason the Lakers would be willing to let him walk is because Kyle Kuzma would be back would they would want to develop Kyle Kuzma who's a potential to be the leader of their team, the Lakers. So it would even make kind of a little bit of sense for the Lakers to let Julius Randle rock. So yeah, and also, and kind of a small reason I didn't write down, the Philadelphia 76ers have enough cap space to re-sign or to sign a power forward like Julius Randle. Julius Randle probably average, I mean, probably asked for something like 15 to $20 million dollars like a contract. It won't be that expensive. As I mean, except for those last 26 games, Julius Randle was a... A little bit above average power forward, but I do think just because of how much energy he brings to the team and how much like depth it would add, and just like I think he's a little bit better of a player, I think that could kind of push him over that little bit of a hump. You know, they kind of ran into a roadblock against the Celtics. I think they could. I think if Julius Randle will be that thing that they need that little bit of push just to be able to get into the conference finals where they're at now and maybe even compete with the Cleveland Cavaliers to make the NBA Finals. But unfortunately, guys, it's going to be it for this video. So if you did like the video at any point, hit the like button and the subscribe button. Comment below. Do you think Julius Randle is going to leave the Lakers? Do you think the Lakers will resign him? Do you think he could go to the 76ers? Do you think the 76ers should resign him? I want to hear all your thoughts and like comments below. I really want to hear what you think. And if you want to see any videos from me or what kind of videos you do want to see from me, type all of that below. I will do them as fast as possible. Trust me. I, I do this for y'all. I want to know what y'all want to do. And also, hope everyone has a blessed day. I had a blessed day. Hope you have a blessed day. Hope you have a blessed life. And see you tomorrow video goodbye <laughs>